Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis. Today, I wanna to talk about a meme. Is it a meme? I don't know, it's a thing that happened. Flared leggings versus yoga pants. If you're confused, just wait. This happened about a month ago, so it's kind of old news, but I still wanted to discuss it, okay? It all started with this TikTok. Millennial women collectively freaked out because it appears that Gen Z are referring to our beloved yoga pants as flared leggings. Can't believe the TikTok teens have just discovered yoga pants and they're calling them flared leggings. I hate it here. Girls finding out what yoga pants are on TikTok and calling them flared leggings is what I'm mad about today. If you're not infuriated that people are calling yoga pants flared leggings, you should be. Somebody please tell TikTok that flared leggings are actually yoga pants. Yoga pants? You mean yoga pants? So I am not actively on TikTok and I actually found out about this from Emma Chamberlain's Instagram. She posted a picture and all of the comments were saying flared leggings. I was confused. So I went to Twitter, saw that this was a big issue and for a second I too was angry that anyone had the audacity to refer to these pants as flared leggings. But then I thought, why would I be angry about this? Thus this video. I think this is an interesting moment to dig into, to learn about cyclical fashion, generational differences, and most importantly, to revive the leggings discourse. This is for sure a silly and lighthearted video uh, in case I haven't mentioned it enough. I am now in the last month of my bachelor's degree, so I've been very busy, hence the lack of uploads. Also, I've been sick this whole week. I will talk more about this at the end of the video, but yes, I needed something light and easy to discuss, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So yes, Emma Chamberlain is a major part of Gen Z's fashion inspo, and she appears to be greatly responsible for this new trend. In October, she tweeted, is it bad that I want flare yoga pants and Uggs to come back? I'm so sorry, but it was so comfortable, please. There are a lot of articles crediting Emma for bringing flared leggings yoga pants back. There have been a lot of style recreations on TikTok and on YouTube, including this one. Everyone was saying, Emma, you're the one that controls all of our fashion. Like, you can bring this back. So the queen herself threw on some yoga pants. She did not wear Uggs, but made a fit out of yoga pants. Outfit number one, we have my yoga pants and Uggs paired with this adorable early 2000s Abercrombie tee and this headband. Essentially, I saw Emma Chamberlain wearing flared leggings and a wide headband, so I bought flared leggings and a wide headband. I find it fascinating how influential Emma Chamberlain is to her age group in terms of fashion and stuff. Literally, she posts one Instagram and it becomes a trend. The impact. But before we continue, we've got to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Vessi. If you are going to be rocking some flared leggings slash yoga pants this year, you're gonna need some comfy shoes to go along with them. Vessi's sneakers are weatherproof, great for the upcoming rainy slushy weather. They're also vegan and cruelty free. Their process is more sustainable than other footwear production because it wastes less material and uses less water and energy. The material, Dymatex, keeps your feet warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So even though these shoes are waterproof, they are still breathable. With Vessi, I don't need to worry about dressing wrong for the weather, which I often do. Oh no, it's raining. No problem. I can walk right through puddles, which suddenly sounds very fun. So watch this demonstration. I'm currently getting over my sickness, so I must stay inside. But look, you can get the whole shoe wet all the way up to the ankle and the tissue inside is still dry. These are a great everyday sneaker, but I'm especially excited to wear them on hikes. I won't have to worry about mud or walking through creeks or anything. No more wet socks. Wow, that's the best. Bessie has an incredible early Black Friday offer right now, so just use my link in the description and get yourself a pair. And if you miss the Black Friday sale, just use my code to get $25 off your Vessi shoes. Thank you, Vessi. Let's get back into it. So millennials are mad that Gen Z are disrespecting our old faves, yoga pants, but obviously we didn't invent them. Leggings and other stretchy, comfy pants existed long before us. So I thought it would be useful to go through the history of leggings, courtesy of this article. Apparently leggings have existed all the way back to the 14th century, Scotland, and leggings were predominantly worn by men until the 1950s. 
the modern day evolution of leggings. We had Audrey Hepburn rocking these capri pants that are not necessarily the same as the leggings we know today, but they were very distinct compared to wider leg pants that were popular at the time. Then in the 60s, we had the iconic invention of lycra, AKA spandex. And the first lycra leggings were made in 1959. Leggings became a lot more popular in the 70s, thanks to Olivia Newton-John and her iconic final costume in Greece. These leggings were more of a shiny, high-waisted, often colorful kind of disco pant. Then in the 80s, Madonna continued to popularize leggings. And then we had the aerobics craze. Jane Fonda wearing leotards over leggings. If you've ever done an 80s decade dress-up day, you probably wore a neon-colored exaggerated form of this. Apparently, leggings started to be a little less popular in the 90s. And then we have the 2000s, baby. Leggings became a staple among it girls. Capri leggings were often worn under dresses and skirts. Here we have Lindsay Lohan with an iconic look. I found this comment on a blog about leggings. I just saw a picture of Lindsay Lohan in a magazine and she was wearing black leggings under her white dress and I thought, gosh, does she know that leggings went out in the 80s when she was a toddler? Then I figured, kids these days. So just so you know, older people always judge younger people for bringing back old trends wrong or simply bringing back trends that they consider to be dead. I did a lot of digging to try to figure out, again, the leggings discourse of the time. So I found this Harvard Crimson article from 2007 written by Rebecca Harrington. Please never wear leggings again. What is the dealio with you people? And Rebecca was bothered. She was pissed seeing leggings all over campus. Honestly, if all of you are going to keep wearing leggings in spite of the fact that they are A, out of style, B, unflattering to most body types, C, reminiscent of a time on Saved by the Bell when Kelly, whatever, then I can't help you anymore. I am only one person, a small powerless female, in fact. Okay. I have already written two articles on this subject of leggings, two years in a row. Two years in a row and she is still bothered. I saw a girl in leggings walking her dog. Fine, I said to myself. Maybe she just had some leggings lying around and she felt it would be a good dog walking outfit. Then I saw it. Leggings were everywhere. Leggings tucked into boots. Leggings with a dress. Leggings under a gigantic oversized shirt with a silk screen of Blondie's face. I highly recommend going to read that. I know it's 13 years old now, but very entertaining. So anyway, now we are around 2007. At that time I was 12 and that was prime legging time for me. I was in middle school. Leggings were everything. But also at this point, it was generally agreed upon that if you must wear leggings, because some people didn't like leggings, leggings rules must be followed. Here's a blog I found about leggings by Angie, The Second Life of Leggings. Yes, leggings are back, but leggings are for the hipless, skinny, and under 25. This very junior look is inappropriate for anyone older, no matter how fabulous their body. At 33, Kate Moss gets away with wearing leggings because she is a fashion muse and supermodel. So to wear leggings in 2006, according to Angie, you must be a child, skinny, or a supermodel. She continues, leggings aren't worn the same way this season as they were back in their heyday. They're being worn under micro mini skirts, more like footless tights than pants. And this was the reference photo, which, brought me back to a time it transported me. That first outfit on the very left with the ballet flats, oh my God. The fact that the leggings have those little ties on them, so bad. But that was the look. I cannot overstate how important the denim skirt plus leggings trend was in 2007. And again, this is a formative year of mine. I found this article. Remember that five minutes in 2007 when we all thought footless tights and a cut off denim skirt seemed like the most boundary pushingly cool outfit you ever heard of? Okay, wait, hold on. We could have beef over calling them leggings or footless tights. I mean, that's for another video to be honest. But look at this picture. Again, there was a time where this was seen everywhere. As you can see, more ballet flats. We have some Ugg slippers, we have some sandals. It was a very versatile look. For those having to show up at middle school, a pair of leggings was the perfect classy addition to your aforementioned choice of jean skirt. Look at that. Oh my God. The different colors of leggings. We didn't just wear black leggings under our skirts and dresses and shorts. We were colorful. And again, leggings meant a lot to us because it helped us override our dress code. So you could still wear your shorts, your skirts, your dresses with leggings underneath, of course. Then we have another blog post from Angie, except it's the next year, 2007. 
She writes, last spring, I popped the revival of the 80s leggings fashion fad into the teeny bopper box. But this year, I can't seem to get enough of the look. See, we even won over Angie. Wow. She realizes that leggings can be worn in a flattering and age appropriate way. And not just for children who are thin or supermodels. We're glad you've grown, Angie. We're glad you've progressed on this. And this is the photo she chooses. Look. Adult women can wear leggings under their dresses and long tunics as well. Is that redundant? Are tunics always long? I think so. Now, the one thing I'm bothered by is the flip-flops, but that's just a me thing. Finally, we get into the leggings aren't pants panic. There was lots of discourse, lots of angry rants. I'm gonna show you some clips, uh, but I just wanted to say, by the way, I used to film some angry rants similar to these. I would just pick a topic and go off about it. Very embarrassing, those videos are privated for a reason. And I hope that these people have maybe changed their minds or at least decided to keep their fashion rants to themselves. But I have to say, these rants were very of the time. Like a quick two minute upload to YouTube, angry, that was it. Let's watch some. Leggings are not pants. Leggings are not pants. Leggings are not pants. Leggings are not pants. Pants are pants. Leggings are leggings. They're two separate things. Today's the 18th of August 2011 and I've been spending way too much time thinking about leggings. Today's the 24th of November 2020 and I've been spending way too much time thinking about leggings. We are so same. Some things never change. Do you remember these? writing on post-it note videos. Wow. Part of this video was just an excuse to go back and relive my painful but interesting middle school years. This one. Some of you people like to use leggings as britches, as pants pants. That ain't how they're supposed to be wore. If you can't wear a shirt that covers your tail so I can't tell that you got some Aztec print thongs on, you don't need to be wearing them. Aztec print thongs on. <laughs> wow. So yes, a lot of these videos insist that if you must wear leggings as pants, you must wear a long enough shirt or dress or whatever to cover your butt. We don't want to see your underwear. We don't want to see your ass. Leggings are not pants. They are way too exposing and show every little detail of our bodies. Some of this just seems like people who have a little bit more conservative fashion style being very judgmental of other people. A lot of these videos included leggings fail type of pictures where people's leggings are see-through. And I'm like, okay, we get the point that you're making. I'm not including those in this video for a reason. If they don't have pockets, they are not pants. So you should be wearing a tunic or a long sweater. Tunic being a top that covers your butt area. If you're wearing leggings as your normal attire, they must have pockets if you're not gonna wear a tunic with them because they just look trashy. Has this woman never heard of the countless number of pants that unfortunately don't come with pockets? We're all asking for more pockets, lady, okay? But that doesn't mean that pocketless pants are not pants. For some reason, the presence or absence of pockets on your leggings determines whether or not you look trashy, according to this woman. Some of this does unfortunately get into the fat phobic category again. People insist that if you aren't thin enough, then you shouldn't be wearing them, which sucks and is wrong. Your ass cannot be the size of 17 watermelons. Like, no. I do not want to see your cottage cheese thighs through the leggings while I'm trying to shop. Again, the fat phobia is horrible. I'm sorry for including it, but also this was a big part of what people were talking about, and that is just terrible. Then we have this PSA looking one. Ladies, if your pants are sold in the tights and socks section, where we can see your undergarments under your pants, they are leggings, not pants. And the twist is that he walks away and he's wearing leggings as pants. Ah. This woman edited this herself, this way. Pants, people, pants. Pants, people, pants. I loved it. That's enough of that. I'm sorry to show you so much, but I had to look through them all. Finally, we get to the 2010s, and the leggings aren't pants panic continues through about 2015-ish. Over time, it became more popular and more common for people to wear leggings as pants, and a lot of school dress codes banned leggings for being distracting. Distracting boys, or even distracting your teachers, appears to be the classic excuse for sexualizing young girls 
and policing their clothing. I remember being told just how distracting my shoulders were as a young girl. It's gross. It's terrible. These tight articles of clothing include yoga pants and leggings. One Montana lawmaker went as far as calling yoga pants provocative and wanted to make wearing them illegal in his state. Boys don't really get labeled as their clothing a distraction, but girls get labeled as their clothing as a distraction. Dress code is some bullshit. The only criticism that I agree with regarding leggings as pants is I do understand if they are see-through, that is not okay, especially for school. But as time went on and leggings were popular, they became more high quality and there was the expectation that they would be opaque or even squat proof. And then finally, we get to the Victoria's Secret yoga pants era. If you're unfamiliar, these were very popular pants. I don't know exactly what year they were popular. I don't think I ever owned them, but they were a signature for their fold over waist and they were kind of boot cut or more flared, hence why they're considered to be yoga pants. I even found this cute DIY Victoria's Secret video and she's ironing on the pink letters to her yoga pants. We love a thrifty gal. I also went through and found some like haul videos and some outfit videos of leggings and yoga pants. And I found this one that perfectly encapsulates how millennials wore yoga pants during this era. This girl's video is a cultural goldmine, to be honest. Is that a Roxy jacket? Iconic. She's got the thick waistband, the flare, the fold over. And then she shows these that are more of a capri cut and she's wearing them with flip-flops. I'm sorry, I have to say no to this. I have to say no. I know it was like a decade ago, but please stop. I'm gonna get some, some flip-flop lovers angry in the comments, but I'm sorry. And then again, the iconic look, these like Ugg or knockoff slippers were a very common shoe choice with the yoga pants because it just complements the comfy, kind of lazy, but still cute outfit, even though we are not in favor of Uggs anymore. Okay, we're nearing the end of the video, I promise. Did I get off track? Maybe. Okay, so really, flared leggings versus yoga pants. Is it right? Is it wrong? When I first heard flared leggings, it sounded very wrong to me. But technically, flared leggings is an accurate description of these pants. Leggings are typically tight, and these leggings are flared. <sighs> Hot take. <laughs> So this is the part of the video that I really wanted to write this whole video for, and that was trying to find the distinctions between leggings and yoga pants, okay? What makes one versus the other? Where's the overlap? So I polled my Twitter and Instagram followers, posting pictures and asking, leggings or yoga pants? And I specifically only gave them those two options to force them to choose. If you had to call it something, what would you say? Some of the results are very clear, pretty overwhelming results, but then some are more mixed. These ones were very divisive. The biggest split in terms of the vote. These ones people just thought were really ugly, but also said that the waistband feels like yoga pants, but they're tight like leggings, so very confusing. And these, a lot of people said they're neither, they're fun pants, stretchy pants, so it's tricky. Okay, so what are leggings, technically? I would say they are tight, stretchy pants, they have certain materials. They can be a spandex or a cotton blend or even pleather or leather for more fashion leggings. They can be worn many different ways for different occasions. You have workout leggings, chill leggings, leggings for layering, dressy leggings, and also jeggings, which we can forget about for now. We don't need to talk about those. So leggings, as a category are a wide umbrella. So then what are yoga pants? Are yoga pants under the legging umbrella? I think they can be, but not always. Victoria's Secret yoga pants were, I think, always the cotton-based pants. Again, I never owned them. I'm not sure, but that's how I remember them. But many yoga pants are also a spandexy kind of material, so either way. But crucially, yoga pants are often boot cut or flared. So that is usually the main distinction that people point out. Also, a lot of people point out the waistband. So if it has one of those fold over waists, a lot of people said that makes it a yoga pant. Or if it has just a thicker, wider top of the pants, that's probably a yoga pant. But I still have questions. Again, are yoga pants a type of legging? I'm trying to figure out like if there's an umbrella or a sort of hierarchy. A square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. You know what I mean? And also, are yoga pants 
just pants that you do yoga in because then technically a lot of leggings that you wear to do yoga can be called your yoga pants. But also I think that yoga pants are more of a distinct style and they're also not only worn just for doing yoga. So I think these were the standard yoga pant in the last decade. And these are the new reborn yoga pants, also known as flared leggings. And they fit the more current trends by being a lot more high-waisted and they don't seem to have those same thicker fold-over waistbands. Either way, I'm getting lost. There are definitely blurred lines between what makes a yoga pant, what makes a legging, there's overlap. I honestly need a Venn diagram for this. Amber sent me this. Two types of leggings, active leggings versus lounge or layer leggings. And then yoga pants are a separate thing with the flare and the flip down waist. And she called them ugly AF. Also interestingly, I noticed or I hypothesized that there's a bit of a regional difference in terms of what you refer to these pants as. I think some people call all soft and stretchy pants leggings or some people call everything yoga pants or some people just call them all workout pants. So that was really interesting to see. Let me know what you call them <laughs> down below. Finally, I wanna give some honorable mentions of other soft, comfy pants. Uh, there's this meme about gauchos, <laughs> which <laughs> again, unfortunately were popular when I was in, I think elementary school. And yes, it was this pink and brown combo, Roxy, TBT. I don't think I ever wore gauchos because I liked to be different. Even when I was 11, I liked to reject the trends, but then I regretted it because those were probably the comfiest pants I would ever be able to wear and I missed out. Another honorable mention, these soft bell-bottom pants that were popular for a couple of years, very like funky 70s vibes. So comfy. I don't think I ever bought a pair because they were always too long on me and I was too lazy to get them hemmed or to do it myself. But now I am tempted. Like that's the exact type of pants that I would like to be wearing right now. And now an ode to flared pants. Why are flared styles popular right now? Some of them are 70s inspired, you know, bell bottoms, especially jeans or more like structured pants, which I love. I've got to say, I've been wearing some bell bottoms for the last couple of years, even when they weren't like that popular yet. So did I start it? <laughs> No, not at all. Also though, flared pants are also potentially part of the Y2K, early 2000s style aesthetic that is very popular right now, especially among Gen Z. So that makes sense why they're being reborn. Some people are trying to bring back low rise jeans, but um, we don't need to go there. I do agree though. We are generally tired of tight, restrictive, skinny jeans. You know, I'm totally down. Let's bring back boot cut. Give me some flares, give me bell bottoms. I am down. And then obviously this year, leggings and very comfortable outfits, sweatsuits, whatever, are like the most popular thing in quarantine. So why not embrace an updated, fresher style of soft pants? The flared legging. Last thing I wanna to touch on, where did the term flared leggings come from? I think a lot of millennials were mad because they may have thought that Gen Z invented this term. Like they just thought, oh, those look like flared leggings. Leggings, but flared? We shall call them flared leggings. So I looked up flared pants and I found many uh, on a lot of, you know, popular sites. So which came first, you know, the chicken or the egg? Did fashion brands come up with calling them flared leggings or are they now naming items flared leggings because it's a popular term? I don't know. I don't shop on these websites, so I have no reference. If you know, let me know. In conclusion, I think millennials are surprised to see our fashion trends from the early 2000s or the early 2010s being brought back, coming back around, because it just makes us feel old. It's shocking. The fact that there are young people today who aren't familiar with yoga pants blows our minds. But hey, we're just, we were born earlier than them. On the other hand though, flared leggings are being introduced as a new thing, which kind of erases our history of yoga pants. And that can be upsetting to some people. I think also we're a little bit jealous of younger people who are taking these styles that we cringe at because it reminds us of our middle school years or other awkward times and the dorky ways that we used to style things. And these young people are now turning these styles into very cute outfits. Is there a bit of envy there? Perhaps. I just think we can all agree that soft, comfy pants are great and we don't need to fight about this. We don't need to be angry. There doesn't need to be intergenerational conflict. Let's unite <laughs> behind a good soft pant. 
Okay, that's it. This is the most I have ever thought about leggings in my life. And it was kind of fun. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Total change of topic and mood, but I wanted to talk about this for full transparency. So I had mentioned that I have been sick. I've been having symptoms since Monday. My boyfriend took me to go get a drive-through COVID test that day. There was only one slot available, so he wasn't able to get tested at the same time. But we've both been quarantining at home since then. And I finally got the test results back on Friday that I am positive for COVID, which was very surprising. We are not sure how we could have gotten it because we've been very careful. I don't see anyone except my boyfriend and he only sees the people that he works with and none of them have had any symptoms or have tested positive. So we're thinking that we must have just gotten it through our regular errands. We also both did go to the dentist last week, which was about five to six days before he started to have symptoms. So that's another possibility. I don't wanna blame the dental office because I know that they're being very careful with screening patients and hygiene and cleaning everything. But also again, we just don't know for sure and there is no way to know. But either way, luckily we have both only had pretty mild symptoms. Mine were the worst on Monday and have gotten a little bit better every day. I have health anxiety, so I've really been trying to not freak myself out and not read too much about COVID. I've just been trying to rest so that I can recover soon. Um, I have my finals coming up over the next like three to four weeks and I need a lot of mental energy to get through that. So need to recover. And as of filming this, I'm on day six. I felt good enough today finally to like wash my hair and actually sit and film, which is really great because I haven't felt well enough all week. Obviously we're going to still monitor our symptoms because things could change at any time knock on wood, and we're going to continue quarantining through the rest of the 14 total days. But just in case you needed another reminder, please, please, please continue to be careful everywhere you go because COVID cases are just raging in the US right now. Same recommendations, please wear masks, please stay home as much as you can. I hope you're all planning to have a virtual Thanksgiving because it is a very dangerous time to be combining households, especially staying indoors together for a long time without masks. So yes, please stay safe. If any of you are also sick right now, I wish you the best. I hope that you recover quickly. Again, I wanna emphasize, even though I've had a mild case, that is not a reason to relax. You still need to be careful because you never know how your body is gonna react or who you could pass it on to. So please, please be careful. It's still very surreal, honestly. If I think about it too long, I get sweaty and stressed, so. By the way, I ask that you guys please don't message me anything about COVID. Don't send me any bad news or treatment recommendations or anything. I just, I'm really trying to not trigger my health anxiety more than it already is being triggered. So thank you. Anyway, that is all. That's a lot, actually. A lot that you probably didn't expect to get in one video. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, thank you Vessi for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys click the link in the description to shop their shoes. Go jump in some puddles for me. <laughs> That is all. Okay, thanks, bye.